I would that preacher find him a, another sermon. And that's all what old Satan wants you to buy into. I remember reading uh, uh, concerning a, a statement when, when, uh, when uh, wounded by Satan, and it was talking about a little small a weasel-like animal like they are called the Ishtimon. And, and this Ishtimon uh, was, uh, had the power to be able to destroy a, a, a foot-long uh, venomous snake. All he had to do was make sure that he was by a plant that had the uh, antidote of, in case he get bit by, that, by this snake. If he go, uh, if he gonna attack that snake, he's gonna make sure that he's by that plant. And so when he uh, would be bitten by the snake, then he can go to that plant and chew off a few of the leaves and uh, be restrengthened, and he go back on the attack again. When we are attacked and solely wounded by Satan, then we have someone we can go to, and that's Jesus the Savior. We can experimentally say he giveth power to the faint, and that them that have no might, he increases strength. Isaiah 40 and verses 29. You know, Jesus never wanted to be famous. But as he continued to exercise these demons, he became faithful. And one thing in the study for this lesson, I, I realized that the demons was willing to recognize the Lord, but the Galileans would not recognize that he was Lord. And we got mem many people in the world today who would not recognize Jesus as Lord. His authority, however, was manifested not by magical incarnations or, or cut ceremonies or mysterious charms, but by his word. His word was with authority. Luke 4 and 32, he rebuked, rebuked both demons and diseases. Uh, Luke 4, 35, 39, and 41. The multitude asked, what is this word? For with authority and power he commands in uh, Luke 4 and 36. Peter says, and, and when uh, uh, at your word, he's I'm going to let down the net, but I've been fishing all night long. But at your word, yes, I'm going to let down the net. Yes, sir. Come on. By word, Jesus healed a leopard in, in Luke 5, 13, and he forgave man's sin, Luke 5 and 20. It was an authority inherent in Jesus himself. Now, Jesus left Nazareth on occasion. Nazareth was 1,300 feet above the sea level. He went uh, from Nazareth to Capernaum, or, or tell whom, a trading city on the northwest shore of the Sea of Galilee, which was 682 feet below the sea level. At first, uh, when Jesus would go into the synagogue, he was uh, always welcome to go in and, and preach to the hearers. This was during his time of fame. But then it came along to uh, the latter part of his ministry. They wanted to kill him because they felt like he had too much authority and, and he was able to tell others uh, that he just like he told the demons said, Come out of it. A uh -huh. peace. Uh -huh. And we, Jesus is not going to come down here and, and do exorcism on, on us in this day and time. And when I was studying for this lesson, I, I thought about uh, the movie The Exorcist. I, I don't recollect reading uh, in this text where uh, when he was doing the exorcism of these demons that uh, the person's head was turning all the way around. I don't remember uh, 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 reading about that. But one thing, the, the rabbis, when they spoke, they spoke of authority of someone else. 
But when Jesus spoke, he had the authority from his father. Uh, the same authority was seen in his treatment of the possessed. The exorcism of Jesus were the thus preliminary skirmishes in the campaign against Satan. To Jesus, all diseases were caused by Satan. Luke 13 and 16. Though not all by possession, so that with each of his cures, he was driving uh, uh, further back the frontiers of Satan's dominion. The reaction in Capernaum synagogue contrasts markedly with that in Nazareth. He was run out of Nazareth. And remember when he encountered the man and, uh, that uh, had uh, uh, demons in him and uh, he said, who are you? What is your name? He said, my name is Legion. And, he, and they made a request to come out of the man. Mm -hmm. But he looked over there and he saw a herd of swine. Yep. He said, can I go into those swine? Now, Jesus knew that these swine were going to be destroyed. So he rebuked the demon and the demon went in the swine and they ran down the mountain and into the waters and were destroyed. Here in our text was the first time that demons uh, were uh, recognized in Luke here and, and in Luke 4, 41 and Luke 6 and 18 and Luke 7, 21 and Luke 8, 27 through 39, Luke 9 and 1 and 37, 43 uh, and 49 and Luke 10 17 and in Luke 11 and 14 and Luke 19 and, and 24. Now, these demons were so brave that they were willing to recognize who the Lord was. But are we willing to stand up for the cause of Christ? I, I, I challenge you as uh, members and as ministers that when it come down when the rubble meets the road are you going to stand up for the Lord? Are you going to be a go along to get along minister? I have a problem with the jelly bag minister who he'll, he, they, the right, uh, one person once said if you won't stand for something you're going to fall for anything. And this is the problem that we're having uh, in the brotherhood where many won't stand up for the cause of Christ. When the prophet spoke, they said, thus said the Lord. Theirs was a delegated authority. When Jesus spoke, he said, I say to you. He needed no authority to uh, they need, he needed no authority to buttress him. His was not a delegated authority. His was authority incarnate. Now, Capernaum was an important town on the northwest shore of the Sea of Galilee and was the center of Jesus' Galilean ministry. Here in Capernaum is where J, uh, Andrew, Peter, James and John resided. This is where Jesus' ministry uh, was concluded. He had been to Capernaum at one time for a short period of time, but he was back at this time where his ministry was going to be concluded. The word and deed, therefore, are practically synonymous. Jesus' word is his deed. The demon possesses supernatural powers. Jesus rebuked the demons, commanding Silas he would not accept the testimony that come from such sowers. At Jesus' command, the demon departed from the man. The moment the departure being marked by a severe conversion. Nazareth was on a High elevation in Capernaum, one of sea on the Sea of Galilee, was 600 feet below uh, the Mediterranean Sea, and was much lower than Nazareth. And as I said, that 
at one time Jesus was in Capernaum according to John 2 and 12. It was suited for the principal residence of Jesus during the three years of his ministry. Now these uh, demons, they wanted to give their testimony by Christ, but Jesus did not want to allow them to give testimony by Christ. And, and, and I remember reading there in the book of Acts, Acts 20, in about verses 29, uh, where Paul said, so after my departure, she had grievous wolves come in to destroy the flock. Brothers and sisters, that time is right now. Uh, Paul told his son in the Gospel of Timothy, in 2 Timothy 4, he said, I charge ye therefore before God, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead as the appearing in his kingdom. He said, preach the word. Be instant in season and out of season. Reprove and rebuke. Exalt with all on suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure some doctrine. And that time is right now. Many members in the church, they don't want to hear the gospel anymore. They want to hear a preacher get up and philosophize or get up and entertain them. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. But I, I, I have to use the scripture and preach the word to them because many do not want to hear what thus say the Lord. In, in, in Luke uh, 4, 24, in about 45, then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scripture. He said unto them, thus are the written and thus are behooved uh, the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And the repentance and remission of sin is going to be preached in Jerusalem. But you got to stay here in Jerusalem till you be endued with this power was on high. Jesus was talking about his uh, uh, apostles. Because back in Matthew, in about verses 20, 21, he said, don't tell them who I am or what I'm about, because my time has come yet, hasn't come yet, but I need you to go and reside in Jerusalem till you be a dude with this power from on high. And then you go to Acts 1 and about verses uh, 10, and, and so why stand you here gazing? That same Jesus that you see us sinning that same Jesus is going to be dis descended. Amen. And then in Acts 2, when the church of that, when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they was all in one accord in one place. Yes. One accord in one place. Say that. The church needs to be in one accord and one place. This wishy washy stuff that's going on in the church, it needs to stop right here and right now. We need to follow God's word. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We're coming up with too many ideas that don't have anything to do uh, with sound doctrine. It's not going to save anyone's soul. Jesus said in, in Matthew 7, in about uh, verses 21. He said, not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he to do the will of my Father, which is in heaven. If you're not going to do his will, then why waste your time? And I've always said, why go to hell through the church? Yes. Yes. But the Jesus that, that we serve is a wonderful Father. He died a cruel death on the cross for you and I. He didn't have to do it. He died for us while we were yet sinners. He did it for us, for you and I. And so many occasions when we get ready uh, to commune uh, with him on, on, on Sundays, we're doing everything other than communing with him. We, 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 we own our uh, cell phone and some will try to say we got a Bible. Some are texting or sending out Facebook, Facebook messages or whatever. But Jesus expects us as individual Christians to recognize 
that he is Lord. He stopped old, the old demon from recognizing who he was because he didn't need that demon recognizing who he was. He need us as members of the body of Christ to recognize who he is and stand firmly on the scriptures. Don't be wishy-washy. Don't be afraid to stand up for the cause of Christ. Don't be the type of individual or minister who just stand for, you won't stand for anything. You, you, you'll just go along to get along. And I know some preachers that are that type, go along to get along. I'm going to stand on God's word if I got to stand by myself. Well, I told the members there in Electra, I'm going to stand on God's word. I'm just thankful that the good Lord is blessing me with the strength to be able to minister to that congregation because I was only supposed to go up there one day. It's been four years now. Good Lord has blessed me to be able to drive 346 miles every Sunday to go up and minister to their congregation. So I'm going to stand on God's word. If he's going to give me the strength to be able to do that, I'm going to stand on God's word. God. I know who my Savior is. Yes, sir. I know what I've gone through as far as health problems, but I know that God left me here for a reason. And you and I must recognize that he left us here for a reason. So you as Christians, recognize who God is and tell people who Jesus is. Don't let Satan do it for you. Thank you very much. Brother David Williams from Electric.